Here's how to make the one ingredient bread, or, or wait, is it two? There was some debate in my previous video and a few requests to show the method. So we've got our four egg whites in there and you just whip it. Really, yeah, that's it. There's a debate that this is actually two ingredients, not one. So, I mean, what do I know? I'm just a chef for a living and cookbook author. So you guys are clearly right. Add another one. So now, now it's two ingredients. If I added this on top, there's six different components in this. So then that would that would make it an eight ingredient recipe. We're just gonna pop it in the oven. Yeah, and let's see what happens. There he is. I'm just having fun. No hate to you guys. All right. I thought. Anyways, I did get some requests of how to make it or like show the how to. So I'm gonna open this up. We're going to stop it. This is a pretty sandwich burger pita situation we're starting this with a great energy i love passive aggressiveness to kick off our one ingredient tiktok series we are starting with bread and the only ingredient you will need to make bread is eggs i was kind of confused with the video like the whole thing with putting the onions on top i don't think that's actually necessary i think this person was just being sarcastic so we're just using egg whites for this because i want to keep this one ingredient recipes for the whole video okay i might need a second container for the egg yolks separating egg yolks and egg whites is not my strongest skills in life but we're gonna do our best here one thing i know is that if you accidentally leave some yolk in there this is not gonna whip i think this is also called a cloud bread this used to be really popular but you know food trends sort of come and go i don't know on pinterest or something we're just gonna hope that it works because I've actually never tried this. I have been interested in these cloud bread recipes for a while. The person in the video does not pass the vibe check. I can't explain it. I have decided that there is some weird energy going on there. I care a lot about my content and the comments on my videos sometimes hurt my feelings. At the same time, I would never make a whole video complaining about my viewers to my viewers. Like, <laughs> that is four egg whites and we actually managed to do this without any i don't know exactly what i'm gonna do with this but we will think of something for the first time ever i've got a hand mixer this cost exactly ten dollars can be very good it kind of smells like something is burning so if this gets through one recipe it's worth it so this next step is obviously to whip this i would love to add some salt pepper spices i think it would elevate this to add something but obviously this is a one ingredient so please do not ruin my egg whites I believe this is ready. Let's do the angel food cake test, which is whether this comes out or not. I'm gonna assume this is the texture they want. There is such thing as overly whipping egg whites because I've done it before. So the oven is already preheating and, wait, I feel like this might be too big. But it might collapse. This is kind of incredible. Like I am obsessed with this texture. I don't know if this will be bread. I don't even know what tools to use for this. Maybe my eggs were too big or something. This is basically it. This is what it looks like. It's just a pile of egg whites. I don't know how this is gonna be bread replacement, but we will make a sandwich out of this and see. So this is gonna go in the oven. I'm assuming for like 15 to 25 minutes. I don't think it was mentioned in the video. I think this might be ready. It looks kind of toasty. Oh my God, it's so light, it's floating away. It is literally flying away. This looks like cauliflower. I'm not sure if I would consider this to be bread, but it does work. Like it's kind of toasty on top, but not too much. It does peel off as well. So that is, oh, actually, maybe we spoke too soon. It smells really good. It smells toasty, caramelly. This looks like um, Japanese melon bread. If you don't know what this is, watch my Disneyland Japan video. So we're gonna slice our bread and I'm actually really excited to try this. The consistency is nothing like bread, but I wasn't expecting that. I kind of love this. You won't be able to see anything because on camera, this is just white. I'm gonna add two slices of cheese. You might need the flavor. And I'm using some, this is like vegan turkey or something. I saved one slice specifically for this video. So this is my vegan ham. Um, I mean, <laughs> it looks interesting. It's getting softer. I think it's the cheese. Hey, maybe don't use cheese if you make this. Why is it like wet, greasy? I love bread. <laughs> How do you eat this? 
My disappointment is unmeasurable. Was it maybe the cheese slices that was adding a lot of weight or was it the fact that this was still warm? When it came out of the oven, it was working perfectly. I was being able to hold it. And then as we put the ingredients, it started to collapse. The flavor of it is actually pleasant. I like it. I just wish I could actually bite into it before it floated away. And it did float away. This is the best quality white chocolate that I could find at the supermarket. And we had to make sure that this was higher than 30% cocoa or whatever it's called. It was the most expensive one, so this better be good. I love white chocolate and I love dulce de leche. And I think this is basically what it is. Dulce de leche flavored chocolate. They didn't say it, but that's what I'm expecting from the flavor. I wanted to make sure you guys saw the oven and the microwave version because we're making the microwave version because it was just too long for this video. Good quality white chocolate and we're gonna break it into pieces. So I might actually use more than one chocolate bar because when it cooks, is it going to become less? This chocolate is so soft that it's literally melting. It's also very jelly-like. So for this one ingredient recipe, we are basically doing a lot of microwaving, which I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of experience with. I would have a PhD in microwaving. I would graduate with honors. I have no idea what it means, but it sounds like I would get it. We're gonna start with one minute, and when this becomes very gritty and the texture is weird, we're gonna switch to 40 seconds. I don't think you guys have ever seen my microwave, so this is my viewers. Viewers, this is my microwave. One minute exactly, and let's see what happens. This is stressing me out. Okay. So, so far, I think this is going perfectly. It is just melted, it didn't burn. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's just liquidy chocolate. So we're gonna mix this just for like 10 seconds. So we are going to pop this back in for another minute. I love being a chef. Okay. I don't know if my microwave is not powerful enough, but this is honestly looking the same. I'm just mixing it for the sake of it. I think it's becoming thicker as I'm mixing it. I feel like we're getting less and less chocolate every time. This is definitely not enough, but I mean, at this point, it's too late. This is our third time microwaving this. Please tell me something happened this time around. I think something is finally happening. There's many chunks in it now, so I feel like we're finally getting to that kind of like caramelly point. There's like a black thing in it. Do you see that black thing? Look at that. It's actually working. Right? Those caramelly bits. This looks like cookies and cream. It has definitely changed color. It does smell a little bit caramelly, but not too much so far. So for this next one, we're gonna do 40 seconds only. And meanwhile, we can clean this up because I do think it's working. It is toasty once again, but I don't think it's burned. Okay, it's definitely darker. Okay, that was actually surprisingly quick. This is what, our sixth time microwaving it? Because it's so bright in here, I promise you this is a lot darker in real life. I honestly think this is basically what they've done in the video, but I'm gonna do one last time. It smells like dulce de leche. Please don't burn now. Now I'm getting nervous it's gonna burn. Don't disappoint me now. I don't know if it's because this is so gradual, but it doesn't look like it changed the whole lot. Okay, so when we mix now, this is gonna be the final color of this. 
Okay, that definitely... Okay, this is perfect, I think. Keep in mind this was white, as white as it gets before. And this is the color that we've reached in the end. Also, this is probably dangerously hot. It's making noises. It went from smelling like Dulce de Leche, it just smells slightly burned. There is like a burn smell in here. I was 99% sure that I actually had a sieve to put this through, but I don't. But honestly, mine is not even that grainy. If it's grainy, it is my fault. So I'm using one of this silicone. I don't even know how I own this and I don't own a sieve. Like that doesn't make any sense, but it is my life. I'm gonna mix it first because the oils are kind of trying to separate a little bit. I wish we could sift this. But this is gonna be fine. Okay. How am I gonna move this out of here? We did not think of that. How am I gonna put this in the fridge? It's pretty liquidy. This You don't really need a spatula for this. This would be fine without it. I think I'm even gonna use a little bit more. But honestly, kind of worked very similar to in the video. I'm gonna try to smooth out a little bit more. I don't know how I'm gonna move this from here now. <laughs> if we ruin this, this is my fault, but I'm gonna use the bottom of a plate. Oh, this is so difficult. Oh my god, that actually worked, okay. Um, I can't move now. See you guys in like, I don't know, 15 minutes? I don't know how long this is gonna take. So here we've got our dulce de leche, caramelized white chocolate, whatever you wanna call it. Why is it like gray? Or am I colorblind? It kind of spilled a little bit in my fridge, but I'm honestly just happy that this actually solidified. It's been like an hour or something. And I say this because the one that we didn't use just ended up becoming greasy. Look at that, it separated the oil from the white chocolate. There is no way to do this without putting it in the fridge. I feel like this will be kind of satisfying. Oh, the sound is incredible. Oh my God, it looks exactly the same as it did in the video. We made this out of white chocolate with no extra ingredients. It looks made. It looks like you'd buy it from a shop. And most importantly, we made this in the microwave. We can clean up the edges a little bit, but it's pretty solid. I would have expected this to become really soft. So if you put it in the fridge, you have nothing to worry about. Now, does it taste good? And is it going to be grainy once we bite into it? Which is the only thing that would ruin this. It's like caramel, it's almost like Rice Krispies blended into caramel dulce de leche chocolate. I have never eaten a chocolate as good as this one that we made in the microwave. I almost wish you guys could listen to the crunch on it because it's just, it feels satisfying like in my skull. Can I give you an ASMR of my skull? I wish. Amazing, incredible, show stopping. They had me in one ingredient butter. This alone, that sentence, is something that I must try in my life. 480 milliliters of whipping cream. We're gonna keep in mind that there are many different types of cream and this one's specifically whipping and not double or single. 300. This cream right here is going to become butter. We're gonna keep in mind that we need to use uh, this attachment, which is the whisk one, because this has to mix for, I can't remember how long I need to find the video, but I think it's like eight minutes plus. Using a stand mixer is only option here. So we're gonna put this in here. I'm going to attach. The butter will start to separate and splatter and become yellow. Five to seven minute mark. I think that's it, that's what we want. Imagine my ancestors being like, is he seriously making butter for fun when he can just buy it? So I'm gonna set up a timer for five minutes and then we're gonna check if he needs two extra minutes. Five minutes, starting now. <laughs> Flashing everywhere. There they are.
this kind of splashed everywhere. I'm gonna have to wash this. I don't know how, but I'm gonna have to because it's literally splashed everywhere in my house. So that is definitely something they failed to mention. I was kind of promised that the whole thing was gonna get stuck in there and that was gonna be our butter. Where did that come from? It's very white. It's suspiciously white though. It's giving me like clotted cream kind of vibes. Here I've got a bowl of really cold water. I mean, ideally we do this under the tap, but I obviously want you guys to see it because I feel like this is the most exciting part. The remaining liquid is, I think, what is supposed to be buttermilk. If this grosses you out, really? Out of all things you've seen on my channel, this is the one that grosses you out? It kind of feels like butter. It's a little soft, so I'm going to put it in the cold water. It's becoming butter. You literally be- Ooh, my fingers. This is incredible. It becomes solid. So I guess we make sure all the water is out. And this is butter. The water is kind of important because it does- It tightens up the whole thing. Even without being refrigerated, you can see how solid this is. It literally took five minutes, not even seven minutes. This is worth the whole video. There is some water on it, but I think it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna put it in here. You know when you go to like a fancy restaurant and they bring you like a roll of butter, like a tube of butter? That's like a thing. So this is very exciting for me. With one ingredient. I'm gonna put this in the fridge for it to solidify. Right now it just looks like a, a milk sausage. <gasps> That's basically what butter is. And hopefully it's gonna be solid enough that we can slice it just like real butter because that is the only thing. That's the minimum requirement of butter. Let's play the French music because we're about to get our butter out of the fridge. And right here I've got a plate with, these are like seeded crackers. Okay, these are gonna be great with butter. They're not great on their own. Salem is not happy about this whole video. This is human food and you've had dinner. Happens to me all the time. So we're gonna get the butter out of the fridge and hopefully it's solid enough that we could use on like a cracker, on bread. And here <laughs> we've got our butter. We've made butter. Life will never be the same. We made butter. This is as solid as butter. I would even say this is more solid than some butters that I've had. It doesn't have any salt, so you know. Can we slice it? I'm gonna go and say the yes. I'm pretty sure that we can. It's like those fancy butters that you get at a restaurant. Let's try it on a cracker. This is a very stressful situation for Salem because he would love butter. It's a little bit grainy. I don't know if you can see, but let's give it a try. This is like bougie butter when you go to like a hotel bar. This is so, so good. We made butter. Probably my favorite butter that I've ever had. Honestly, can't stop eating it. It is literally addicting. This is the best, most addicting butter that I've ever eaten. I would have never thought same. Sorry, buddy. It is nice. Hey Siri, can dogs eat butter? In general, butter is unhealthy but safe for dogs to eat. It's butter unhealthy but safe? Dogs. Okay, I'm gonna let him lick my finger. That's it. This is salt free as well, so... People are probably gonna report me to the animal abuse organization, so... Was it worth it? I think so. Interesting. That's all I can say about this one. You can consider this a one ingredient recipe if the honey jelly at the end, if it's going to taste good and just be like something, if it's something worth making, I guess this is a recipe. I am interested in the texture of it. It looks really satisfying. I bought these, you know, those Korean liquid yogurts. I don't really know what this is, but they're really good. So what I did was I tipped the yogurts out. I'm more excited about the texture than the flavor because I don't have a lot of hopes for this. I grab one of these and we are going to fill it with honey. I don't know if this needs to be like a bougie kind of honey. Or so I'm going to fill up the honey bottle. I kind of made a mess when I made this earlier. So I'm trying to be... Okay, this is going a lot better. I should have definitely used this technique earlier, but it's fine. I just kind of want you guys to see what the process is like and if you actually want to give this a try and I feel like that's it. I don't want to fill it up to the very top because you know when things freeze, they expand in volume. That's like a thing I remember from like third grade, the only useful thing. So this is kind of what I've done. I have prepared two or three of these four hours ago because obviously we want to follow the instructions. This was in the freezer four hours and I have not seen them. I'm going to get them out and we will see. 
So, is this what people call a jello shot? This is kind of what it looks like. I mean, it's pretty solid, like nothing really comes out. It is very sticky on the outside of the packaging. What we really want to find out is, will this be a weird jelly-like texture? Just from putting this in the freezer. Okay. Ugh. Oh, it doesn't come out. Something is happening. My fingers are freezing off. That's what's happening. <laughs> oh my god. This looks like some weird candy from like the 90s or something. I think getting the rest of it would be very, very difficult, but it's safe to say that it does work. And this was straight from the freezer. How far can we push this out? I think that's about... <laughs> This is basically a recipe for a DIY freeze pop, lollipop, I don't really know, but I guess we lick it? <laughs> I mean, it's great, it's actually good. So let's see if this is like a jelly texture. Ooh, I don't like it. Texturally, this is, look, it's even better this time around when it's sort of cooled down a little bit. Like this is, this is like pimple popping or something. Licking it like a lollipop or like an ice cream is really good actually. The texture, it's satisfying. Biting into it, it's not like jelly. It's, it's a texture that really bothers me. Personally, wouldn't even consider this a recipe. But I mean, I guess if you run like an ASMR channel, this would be interesting. One ingredient, Cheez-Its. Just listen. If you love the sound of that, let's go. I'm using this cheddar, but you could use any. You could even use the slices. I take my block of cheddar and I cut it into thin strips. I then cut those strips in half. Arrange them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and make sure that they're spaced apart well. Take a straw and poke a hole in each one. Bake at 275 Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. Let them cool, enjoy, and follow me for more. There is no denying these look incredible. The only thing that makes me a little bit reluctant is the fact that my cheddar cheese, my cheddar cheese is not orange, it's just regular color. So it's not gonna look exactly like cheese it. So we're gonna use one block of cheddar cheese. This is just a lot easier to cut into that shape. If this works, I am going to be very happy with this. And also this is great if you're doing like a keto diet or like a gluten-free diet kind of thing. This is a great replacement for chips. And even Salem's excited about it. Okay, I don't think it's too thick. It is a little like, it breaks quite easy. So when you break it, you do have to watch out. This is me attempting to show you how thick I'm cutting it. Salem is acting up. I'm gonna let him sit here next to us. This is the only way he's gonna leave me alone, guys. I'm sorry. So I'm gonna cut this kind of like this thickness. What do you think, Salem? Does that seem right? I think so, right? I'm gonna say one, two, three, three more. I am kind of worried that we're doing them a little bit too thick. I'm gonna do one of them really thin, just in case this goes wrong, at least one will be crunchy. And I'm gonna do another one really thin. Ooh, this one is too thin. <laughs> so this is kind of what we're going for. I mean, I'm gonna hope that they're not gonna spread out too much. What do you think, Sal? Looks good, right? So I'm gonna cut them in half. I mean, this whole thing is really simple. And honestly, I would have thought this would have taken at least three hours, sort of dehydrated. I think it's 25 to 30 minutes. It's not too long. The only thing that we need to do, and I think this is what helps it cook in the center so that it's crispy all throughout. I'm using a bamboo straw, but you know, probably just use a regular one. This one is great for bubble tea. Oh, it's also great to destroy this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that though. There's like a little dot of cheese. I can't get that out. They definitely didn't mention how to get the cheese out of the straw. It's not too easy to cut holes in this with a straw. I think because the straw I'm using is so big, it's sort of breaking the cheese apart. If this doesn't work, it's entirely my fault. The thinner ones are a lot easier. I feel like it might've been my fault. Definitely do them thinner than me. Next time I'm gonna be having a latte or something with a straw, I'm just gonna get a surprise, cheddar surprise. <laughs> The thinner ones are definitely a lot easier, so if you do this, please do them thinner than me. Nobody, me cleaning up my my earwax. <laughs> Salem, wouldn't you like one of these little Cheez-Its? It would also probably kill you, I'm sorry. Worth it? Probably. Not with this brand. I would get you the French stuff. It does kind of look like Cheez-Its, I don't know why. Try this with like a metal straw or something smaller. Mine was like, it's fully clogged up still. It's still very simple. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 135 degrees Celsius, which is very low. Should be enough to turn these crispy. So say goodbye to the Cheez-Its. Salem, I'm sorry, like you can't even get close to this. So these have come out of the oven and then I kind of let them sit there in order to cool down a little bit. And the result is 
Couldn't have said it better myself. They look good. They definitely don't look as good as the ones from the video. I think it's because we just made them too big. I think it's really good that we try different thicknesses because you guys can kind of see if they're really thin, this is the color that you're gonna get in like 25 minutes. It's very similar to the video. They even went that reddish color that I was kind of hoping to get. They're really thick. It's more like a pale yellow, and I think these are gonna be crunchy on the outside, soft and chewy in the center. So it is literally whatever you prefer, but we will give it a try. This one seems, I want the crispiest one. I think it's this one. It's really interesting. The darker ones, the ones that look very like burned are actually the best ones. I think that's what it's supposed to be like. Salem, I'm sorry, buddy. This is so, so good. If you give this a try, make them smaller and make them as thin as possible. I promise you, if it looks burned, it's just when it tastes, it kind of gives you the crunch of a real cheese head. The darker they are, the better they taste. You'll never guess this one ingredient, caramel. So creamy and so easy to make. Can you guess it? Medjool dates. Some of these one ingredient recipes, like I can kind of see it, like how, how that one ingredient becomes the final product. With this one, it's kind of unexpected, but it might be because I never eat dates. So these are called Medjool dates. I don't know if there's only one type of dates or if there's many. The only thing I'm hoping for is that there's no stones in it. Pitted means that there's no pit in it, right? I just know that the person who came up with this recipe is one of those people who refers to blueberries and raspberries as nature's candy. These were kind of expensive, so I'm on Honestly hoping that this works. This is my new food processor. It looks like a blender, but I promise you this is a food processor. Okay, that's it. I don't eat dates very often. I've eaten it before, maybe like once or twice. I don't remember it tasting like caramel, but it's possible that I've eaten like bad quality ones. I am going to just make sure there's nothing on the inside because I feel like this would ruin. How is that going to become caramel? It seems like once you blend this, it's gonna become like almost like a jelly. That's what I'm expecting, but that is it. This is supposed to be nature's caramel. Nobody called this nature's caramel other than myself. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt always for the rest of my life and after. Even Salem is kind of checked out with this one. It's like nature's candy. I don't think so. You got some Mars Twix. As soon as this goes off, Salem is gonna jump out. He does not like stressful situations. Let's make some caramel. <laughs> It does not smell like caramel. Let me see if I can give you guys a close up. I'm not entirely sure about this blender food processor combination. Should have just used a regular food processor. Thing is, I don't have one. They sold this to me as like the next big thing in food processor. Yeah, this is not going anywhere. It's probably going to the trash, that's about it. <laughs> in the bottom, it kind of looks like caramel a little bit, but it's literally just the bottom bit. The rest of it is still chunky. Some of it is very creamy, do you see? It is almost like a caramel, just a little bit grainier. It actually kind of worked. I mean, obviously this is not the best food processor. I wouldn't even call this a food processor. So if you ever see this at the store, don't buy it. But it did kind of work. It's just a little bit chunkier than in the video. On the sides, it worked really well. This is really creamy, it really does look like caramel. Definitely not as creamy as in the video, but it does look like caramel. So it could be that this tastes like caramel. I'm gonna go for one of the smooth bits, so this is like fair. Honestly, if you put this in a dessert, like as ice cream or like next to ice cream, I would think this is the thickest caramel sauce. It does have like the caramel burn sugar flavor to it. I kind of like it more than caramel. Sorry. How amazing does that look? And it's truly one ingredient, obviously, if you don't count water. I don't think water counts as an ingredient, but like how incredible is it we create that texture out of just one bar of chocolate. We're using good quality chocolate because just know with this kind of stuff, it's probably like important. In the video, they did this over like boiling water. We're not doing that. The microwave has served me well my whole life. So we're gonna melt this in the microwave. I'm just gonna add a splash of water, slightly less than they did in the video. I think that should... 
please feel free to try this the way they did it in the video, but I'm just gonna do it in the microwave and I'm gonna be careful that it doesn't burn. So we're gonna do 20 seconds at a time. I haven't brought up the ice yet because I don't want it to melt. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna start with 25 seconds. Surprisingly, this only took 40 seconds total, but because I think because there's water in it, it made this a lot easier. Okay, so the water doesn't mix completely with the chocolate. I am going to go and get the ice because we don't want this to cool down. So this is not ideal. My ice machine is not working. I literally got three pieces of ice. Okay, this is cooling down. Okay, quick thinking. This is possibly the dumbest thing I've ever done. I had a bag of diced onions in the freezer. At this point, desperate times call for desperate measures. We're going to put this in the... If this works, I should honestly... I should get an award for this. I'm just gonna use one because I don't want this to go everywhere. And we're just gonna mix it. There's a piece of onion. It was kind of working and then it stopped working, I think. I don't think that's what's supposed to happen, but I mean, it does feel like it is super shiny and like, this is the texture of melted chocolate basically. But also, do you see how it's got like a bounce to it? How is this? It's like chewing gum. Fluffy and melted at the same time. It is fully cooled down. It's like we made caramel out of chocolate. I think it was working for a second and then I think we overly whipped it or something. That is so weird. And I honestly want to come back for more. It's almost like a chocolate jelly. It didn't work out the way we wanted, not the process, but the result is better than I could have ever expected. You'd never guess this one ingredient ice cream. Frozen banana. Before everyone says that this is like already an existing recipe, like this is something that a lot of you guys already know, that you can turn one banana frozen into ice cream. Even if I personally already knew about this recipe, there's always someone who's finding out about the first time. I've tried this like five or six years ago and I think it worked. I honestly can't remember exactly. I don't have a good food processor. I think we, we can establish that from my videos. Food processors are very expensive kitchen utensils. Like they cost like $500 for like an average one. So I've never bought one because it's honestly like such a big investment and I don't use it that often. I think if this is too frozen, it won't work. There's like a little hat. I don't know what this is for. I'm gonna try with the smallest pieces because I already know. In the video, it seemed really creamy. The banana ice cream it was almost suspiciously creamy. So I don't know. This food processor is one of the cordless ones that I bought. You guys have probably seen it in my previous video and it hasn't been working great. So we'll see, but I'm still gonna put the lid on. Please don't disappoint me. Wait, how does this work? Why am I scared of food processors? Okay, something must not be right here. Why is the whole thing? This is working. Let me see if I can show you. Why is it going dry? <laughs> oh, it smells like something is burning. It kind of looks flaky and dry on the outside. Once we mix it and press it, I think this will be fine. Also, I've never seen my nostrils from that angle. So I'm gonna try to get it out and see if at least we can, this will become creamier. Was this too frozen? Is that the problem? Can we press it? I am disappointed. I'm gonna put this back in there. We're gonna try this again. Why does this have to be so difficult? Okay. Yes! <laughs> Finally a food processor that does the job. Oh, this is perfect. It's just like ice cream. It's like, let me show you how insanely creamy and like fluffy this is. It's like real ice cream. Honestly, I would never know this is one ingredient. I used two bananas for this and you literally made the equivalent of maybe like one scoop of ice cream. Do keep that in mind. With this consistency, it's truly worth it. When I taste it, my brain is telling me that there's milk, cream, the regular ice cream ingredients in it. And honestly, it is sweet. It does not need extra sugar, which if I say it, you know it's true. 
1 ingredient frozen pizza calzone no more soggy crust yum this is one of the most stupid pointless things that I've ever seen ever on TikTok. We have to try it. Technically, it is one ingredient, even though the one ingredient is a million ingredients. This is how to transform a pizza into a calzone. And I think in the end, the lady says, no more soggy crust. What kind of pizzas are you buying? I've never complained about a soggy crust on a pizza that you buy from the supermarket. This pizza is not frozen. This one is from the fresh section, you know, the refrigerated section, which I think is a lot better than trying this with a frozen pizza because you'd have to wait for this to fully soften up. And I think this is literally the perfect pizza for this. We've got the pizza in here and I love being a chef. Wait a minute, this is like, it's like breaking. Why is he breaking? Do you see? It's like tearing. Okay, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing I can do. Like, it's broken. It's kind of annoying on this side, but overall, it's like... Does it look like a calzone? Not really. It looks like a messed up Subway sandwich. Also commonly known as a Subway sandwich. I can only hope that you guys can see. It's literally bursting. I literally thought this was stupid, but this is actually worse than I was anticipating, so... So we're gonna bake this and we're gonna see if it goes anywhere. Okay, it's been around 25 minutes. This is the calzone that would horrify Italy. Like, ouch. It is crispy. I mean, the lady was right about no more soggy pizza bases. I'm kind of joking. I actually think that it doesn't even look that bad. But a good thing is that it didn't spill out. Like, it's broken, sure, but it didn't spill out cheese and sauce and everything everywhere. So I'm gonna slice into it. <laughs> this is so tough. We had to obviously cook it for long enough so that the cheese in the center would melt. Maybe this will look incredible. Okay, you guys ready for the money shot? Okay, we didn't do a good job at cutting it. This is kind of everything. <laughs> like... I like this. It doesn't look great from the sides, but once you cut into it, the cheese seems melted. Let's give it a try. Honestly, it doesn't taste like a calzone and it doesn't taste like a pizza. It almost tastes like a sandwich. I think a sandwich is the closest to this in texture. That's what this tastes like. I kind of love it. I really like it. I was not expecting it. I kind of put this one in the video as kind of like a joke. Like I was hoping that it was gonna be great, but I was like 99% sure this is just stupid. And I think I would make my pizza like this again. Like this is fun to hold, it's fun to eat. If I was watching TV, this would be perfect. And this would be ideal to dip. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a different idea. I've never seen a compilation of one ingredient recipes from TikTok on YouTube before. If you like it and you'd want a part two, you know what to do. I don't even, I'm not even gonna say it. You guys know exactly what to do. Please don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on. If you scroll down, there's a subscribe button. And if you press it, I am forever grateful because that means if I make a part two to this series, you will receive a notification. I hope you got something out of this video. I probably got like two or three that I will actually use. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.